Welcome back. Today on Dialed in DIY, we're making a basic alcohol stove out of parts that you probably already have around the house. What you see here is basically all you're going to need. I'll explain each as we're going through this process, but I did want to point out JB Weld. This is the type of adhesive I use for this kind of a project, and there are two types. The JB Quick does dry a little quicker, but my results are not as consistent with it, so I don't tend to use that. To make the stove, you're going to start with two aluminum cans about the same size, and you're going to start by cutting one in half. You really don't have to be precise at this point because we are going to trim these up and make them smaller than we start with. In fact, this first can is going to be about another third shorter when we're done. The second can is going to be about half the total size of the first one, so you can cut this one a little bit shorter to start with. Trimming them down to size is actually quite easy. I just grab a pair of scissors and I start going along the edge and keep spiraling it down till I get the size and the shape I want. Essentially, when you get to the bottom or to the final size that you have, you're going to want this to be pretty flat. For this particular can, I'm going down to about a two finger size. I'm choosing a two finger size just because it makes it a lot easier for this video. Two fingers on this one means to get half the size for the second can, I just need to go to one finger. As I get close to the end here, I just set it down flat on a surface to make sure there aren't any big gaps. If so, I clean those up. One of the big reasons this one needs to be smaller than the first one is because of the fact it's going to set down inside. So whatever difference there is between these two is going to be the amount of space we have for fuel once we have our stove assembled. We're now going to take the smaller piece and make our burner holes. The first thing you're going to do is mark where you want your holes to be. You can be really precise and make a template like I did here, or you can do what I prefer typically and just kind of rough in where you want the holes to go. When we're done, we're going to have eight spaces marked that are pretty much evenly distanced. I'm using a big hole punch here to make these holes because I can't find my preferred tool, which is actually just a thumbtack or a pushpin. Believe it or not, that pushpin or thumbtack makes a very precise hole the size basically exactly what I want. Unfortunately, with this hole punch, my hole on the first pass is a little too big, and that can affect your performance. It all depends on how precise you need this to be for whatever purpose you're going to be using it for. For really precise holes, you can use a small drill bit, or you can actually do what I'm going to do right now. I just flip the can over, put it on a piece of wood, and push again with my hole punch. This allows the hole to be more controlled in size and gets me exactly what I'm after here, and that's good. The other hole being too big means too much fuel is going to come out of that as we're going, and we won't get as controlled of a burn on our stove. If you're making these to use for camping or backpacking purposes, I do recommend that you actually make a couple of different types to practice with and figure out what works best for you. As you can see, I'm using a second can here to make a little bit of a slight stretch to our bottom piece. And then we're going to take some sandpaper, and this is totally optional. We're just going to kind of smooth out some of these edges a little bit. I find that once it's constructed, it makes it easier to not get it snagging on anything. I'm actually using a piece of fiberglass insulation to use as a wick inside this bottom piece of the can. We stretch it out a little bit just to kind of expand it and then push it down into the can. Once we put the top on it, when we're all set in place, we'll shake it up a little bit and that'll allow it to expand back out. This wick serves me for two purposes. Number one, it gets the fuel closer to the burner holes, but number two, it actually keeps the fuel from sloshing around inside quite as much. As I mentioned before, I'm using the JV Weld. This stuff is perfect, and you can find it in most hardware stores. You're going to use equal parts of each of the two tubes and mix it up very well first. Now basically what you're going to do is just smear a little layer of this around the inside of that bottom can right along the top as you see I'm doing here. I'll rotate the can around so you can see what it looks like all the way around the inside. With this done, we're now going to take our top piece and place it on top of our bottom piece. Both of them will be facing in the same direction. Once we get it to this point, we're going to turn it upside down and start to gently and firmly press all the way around. Once it gets started, you can press a little bit harder. Just be cautious as you do, continually turning it a little bit to make sure that you don't buckle it too much on the inside. Once the top edges of both cans line up, turn it right side up again and gently press all the way around the inside lip. This will make sure there's good contact between the two cans. Now, you just need to allow it time to dry. 
Now we're going to take our newly created stove for a test run. Just make sure to do this in an open area where there's nothing flammable close by. Over the years I've tested several different types of fuels, but I tend to find that the rubbing alcohol that's 91% works best for me. As you can see, I'm just going to pour in a small amount for this first test run because this is, of course, flammable fluids. And what we want to make sure is that our test run is allowed to be done when there is not a large amount of fuel in case something goes wrong. The fuel will eventually bubble in on its own, but if you tip it slightly, it'll allow the air inside the can to escape as the fuel goes in. To start up our stove, I place it on top of a soup can lid and then add a few extra drops of our fuel. I then light up that soup can lid and that will start our fuel inside our stove heating up and that'll get re things ready to go. As you can see in this particular test, it quickly jumped the flame up inside the stove and got things going right away. As the fuel heats up, it's going to expand a little bit and that alcohol is going to turn into a gas. That gas is going to create pressure on the inside of the stove and that will cause our flames to start to shoot higher and higher and higher. This is why you want to back up a little bit when you run the first test. I've made a lot of different sizes and types of these stoves over the years and I'm actually going to share some more of those with you in future videos. As well, I'll share some different tips and tests that you can run to figure out what's going to work best for you. I've referred to this as my basic stove because it's pretty much the easiest to make, but it also works really, really well. It's a good basic stove for any purpose that you might want to use it for. With the amount of fuel that we used in this test, we got a burn of eight minutes with a flame of this size, which is actually really good considering that I made two of the burn holes a little too big. Hey, hope you have fun making some stoves. Come back in the future and let's see what else we can make together. Thank you for watching. Please press like and then subscribe. There will be more dialed in DIY to come.